Good evening and welcome everyone. I hope you had an enjoyable spring break and if you had a holiday to celebrate, I hope you enjoyed that as well. My name is Kyle Hosier. I'm the principal of the junior senior high school and I'm joined here with Ms. Joseph. Hi everyone. Ms. Johnson. And our superintendent of schools, Dr. Victoria Newell. Hi everyone. I want to thank you for your patience as we put together this plan for the remainder of the year. All of the feedback that you offered, I want to let you know that we all read the feedback, we heard the feedback, and that helped us create the plan that you're about to hear about this evening. Additionally, we sent out an email yesterday that overviewed the plan, but we know that uh, there are so many different questions you may have, so we wanted to meet tonight to highlight the plan and answer questions that you do have. We shared yesterday a Google form that you can use to submit questions. So you could submit those questions now or wait till the end of the presentation and submit the questions then if we weren't able to answer the questions that you have. We will first just do an overview of the full day plan to make sure you have some of the important details. Talk a little bit about the community partnerships that we're really excited uh, to offer our seventh and eighth grade students. Look at sample schedules. We think looking at the schedules, it will really help to understand what the plan is. Answer questions about lockers, lunch, and the remote option. Identify our next steps, and then leave uh, enough time to answer any questions that you may have. So our full day option, we're gonna keep the six period schedule that we've had all year with a full day hybrid and remote option, but we're gonna uh, revise it slightly to increase the instructional periods each day. We'll add four minutes to each period. So classes go from 45 minutes to 49, thereby reducing the transition period from 72 minutes to 48. And that alleviates a lot of the concerns we had with supervision during that time. Again, we're excited that we've been able to partner with the Digital Arts Experience in the Greenberg Nature Center for grade seven. And for grade eight, we will also partner with the Greenberg Nature Center. Students are permitted to stay on campus for the entire day. However, if you just wanna to come to school for classes and then leave in, during the transition period or the transition period in an adjacent period, you are permitted to do that provided a parent signs you out. If you have a day where you wanna go remote, but you're on a full day plan, provided you communicate that in advance, you will be permitted to do that. And if a student opts to enter the hybrid uh, cohort and then decides that they wanna go full day or go remote, that will also be permitted. Uh, and we know that your level of comfort may change with the coming weeks. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Joseph to talk a little bit about, or actually before we turn it over to Ms. Joseph, I just wanna um, make sure everyone understands why we went with this six period option. When we looked at the feedback and then we looked at how parents responded to whether students would be full day, hybrid or remote, it became apparent that we were gonna have many more students go full day if we stuck with the AM PM schedule and we would have more students go to a remote option and a hybrid option if we went to the nine period schedule. So based on that information, we know we wanna bring students back. We thought it was prudent to use this revised AM PM schedule with the community partnerships that you're about to hear about from Ms. Joseph. Thanks, Mr. Hoosier. <clears throat> so as we've been talking to you about our plan to bring students back, we always wanna keep in mind what our goals are. So every time we come up with a new plan or a, a version of that plan, it's are we keeping all our students and faculty safe? Are we providing meaningful, meaningful opportunities for them to socialize? Are we increasing, are we maintaining flexibility for families to make choices that, that meet their needs? But above all of that, are we creating opportunities for them to learn authentically, but also aligning with our district goals? So I don't know how, how many of you are aware, we have three major goal areas. And our first focus is really on purposeful instruction to deepen student learning, regardless of where the educational setting is and across all content areas. <clears throat> so in grade seven and eight, we're trying to bring all students back on campus, but we want to make sure that every single period is supervised and structured in some way. So it's almost a continuum of, of independence of sorts. So we've been lucky enough to partner with two great local organizations, the Greenberg Nature Center and Digital Arts Experience. <clears throat> and both of these programs are going to work with our students um, that, that also collaborates with our faculty and staff in our curriculum. It's going to be small group uh, programming, no groups uh, larger than 20 um, students per group 
Grade seven and eight will have the opportunity to work with Greenberg Nature Center. And they're working currently with our, our science department to make sure that their curriculum aligns with our EHS curriculum. There'll be two workshops per cycle. And if a student stays on campus, it's part of the day that we, we want this to be an authentic extension of their learning. So they will be staying on campus and learning through the Great Greenberg Nature Center. When the weather allows, they actually will go to the Nature Center and experience that in a, on a deeper level. We also have seventh graders taking the STEAM uh, curriculum at EHS right now. So the digital arts experience is also expanding that to our grade seven, where they will have STEAM curriculum. We're working with the director of technology to look at what that program looks like, but it will be included, uh, including programming, graphic design, 3D modeling, and things of that nature, but it's not limited to that. So all of these things will be part of that enhanced authentic learning experience. These courses are not credit bearing, but if a student stays on campus for the full day, we expect students to be uh, joining these workshops. And what that looks like, Ms. Johnson will talk about in greater detail as she looks at the schedules with you. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. So you can see here a sample schedule for a grade seven student. As you may know, we have a six day cycle and you can see, for example, on day one, for all seventh graders, their lunch period is in course five. So on day one, they have lunch in course five, and then in the transition, they will work with the Greenberg Nature Center. As Mr. Hosier said, we did that purposely to avoid um, too much time where students would be on their own with not enough to do. So here, as you can see, lunch followed by the Nature Center. And then on day two, a similar event will occur, they will be with the digital arts and then have their lunch again in course five. On day three, course five does not meet, so they will have lunch during the transition time with their classmates. And it occurs again on days four, five, and six, where they will have lunch followed by an activity with the Nature Center or the digital arts experience. Next slide, please, Mr. Hosier. And here you can see a sample schedule for a grade eight student. Again, it's following the six day cycle that we've had all year and the six period per day. So you can see for the eighth graders, their normal lunch is during course six. So most of the cycle, they um, do not have course six adjacent to the transition period. For example, day one, course six occurs during block F. So as Mr. Hosier and Ms. Joseph said, students who have to stay on campus will be placed into a supervised study hall, or you are of course free to pick up your child early after block E and take them home at the end of the day. And that was day one. Day two, again, they will just have a lunch. Course six does not meet on a day two. And you can see on days three and six, those are the days per cycle that lunch is adjacent to the transition. And that is when our eighth graders will work with the Nature Center. Next slide, please. So as you can see, the transition period is 48 minutes long and students are welcome to stay on campus or of course they can be signed out to go home for lunch, particularly on those days when they do have lunch next to the transition for a longer amount of time, they are more than welcome to stay and enjoy the Greenberg Nature Center or of course go home and eat lunch for that extended time. If they do stay on campus, we will have a limited lunch menu through our cafeteria. It will likely be a sandwich or salad type option, although we are working with our cafeteria now. We will not allow any outside deliveries of food and that is for safety and security reasons. Lunch will be supervised and if weather permits, we will maximize our outdoor spaces. And we've had many questions from students and parents about lockers and absolutely yes. If your child opts to become a full day student, they will be assigned a locker. We don't have enough lockers on campus for every student, but fortunately most seniors and quite a few of the juniors, they opt not to have lockers. And we will be sending out a Google form to all students to sign up for one. But I can assure you that our seventh and eighth graders will be given priority to get a locker. We know that's important to them for their books and for any kinds of sports equipment they might have. We also remind you that our goal is to bring back students full day. Of course, we do understand that you may need to choose a hybrid, you know, the AM PM option or even fully remote. But we do ask that if you are going to choose fully remote, 
to do so only if it's medically necessary for your child or for somebody in your family. We know that many students have become comfortable sleeping in or just um, staying home for their classes. And we do think it's healthy for them, both mentally, socially, psychologically, to come to campus and get back into a regular routine. So we do encourage that. And now I will turn it back to Mr. Hosier. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. In terms of our next steps, we have another meeting at 8 p.m. to meet with parents who have students in grades nine through 12. After that meeting, we'll send out an email tonight that has a Google form that you can use to select the new cohort you would like your child to join. We're asking parents to make a, a, a selection and to submit that using the Google form by 3 p.m. on Friday, April 9th. And we need a little time to look through those numbers to make sure that some of the last details that we need to finalize, that we can do that once we know what the new cohorts are. We will meet with students tomorrow after school and again, once we have more information from that Google form, we will be able to finalize the room locations, identify how many study halls we need, identify where students will have lunch. And we plan to update student schedules on Infinite Campus to reflect the changes that were made. So if students have a new study hall, they know where they need to go. Or if they are staying on campus for lunch, students know where they go for lunch. We know that having that information on the schedule, the, makes it easier because students can see it, parents can see it, and it just makes everything a, a little clearer. With that, we'll stop sharing my screen uh, and we will answer questions. Again, if you do have questions, and we've had a number of questions that were submitted already, which they were helpful to see for us to understand where there could be some confusion, you can submit your questions using the Google form that was shared in the email yesterday. So if you do have questions, we welcome you to submit those questions at this point. Ms. Johnson, we're ready when you are. Okay, the first question is about flexibility. Will students, for example, be able to be full day, four days a week, and then hybrid one day a week, as long as it's known and planned ahead of time? We are asking students to, uh, if they're full day, to go full day or hybrid, go hybrid. We do know that there are unique circumstances for each family. So if that presents a real problem, we encourage families to reach out to us. Great. The next question is about band and chorus. What is happening with band and chorus? Will students attend all of their scheduled band and chorus meetings or only those currently assigned? Great question. And there were, we know that there were a couple questions related to band and chorus. So with band and chorus, we're talking about a very large group of students, sometimes over 100 students. So there's no way for those students all to meet at the same time. So if your child has band or chorus listed on their schedule, it is likely that they don't meet each of those periods. We are working with the uh, performing arts teachers to identify which students will be free. And it is likely that if they are free, that they would have an additional study hall assigned. Great. The next question, I think we answered it's about lockers, but it probably bears repeating. The question is, will students have access to lockers? Would you like to take that one? <laughs> I would love to. The answer is yes. Although I said that we don't have enough lockers on campus for every student, grades seven and eight will be given priority. And we will be sending out a Google form probably tomorrow or the next day to students asking them to let us know if they would like a locker. So please tell your student to respond. And like I said, grades seven and eight will get priority. The next question is about um, parents who've already picked a remote co cohort for their child. Can they now change it to hybrid? Ms. Joseph, would you like to take that one? Thank you. Um, yeah, Mr. Hoosier just mentioned that we will be sending out a Google uh, form after the meeting tonight, which includes the video and the slides and also a form, which will be asking you, would you like to change your cohort or keep your cohort? So there is an opportunity for parents to select a new cohort. And I would just add on to that because I know there are going to be questions. Again, if I commit to the full day cohort and then feel like I'm not comfortable staying full day, can I go back to hybrid? We will allow that flexibility. We, we wanna make sure that we bring students back, but also to meet students and families at their level of, of comfort. Great. The next question is, will students still be able to arrive late and or leave early, for example, if they're free during block A or block F? 
yes, if you have a, a free period to start the day or at the end of the day, you can come late or leave early and you don't need a parent to sign you out. If you do leave during the transition period and you're in grades seven through 10, we would need a parent to sign you out using a Google form that will be shared each morning in the same way we send the reminder for the easy screen uh, reminder. And this is a similar question, but a parent writes, um, if their child has just one class in a morning block, for example, can they go in just for that one class? Um, or do they have the choice to do that single class remotely? Again, if the student is full day, we, we are expecting students to be on campus if they're full day. If there are unique circumstances like that, again, please reach out to us so we, we can uh, look at each individual case. Now we have a couple questions about band and chorus because we know that they've been doing lessons at different times. How is that going to work once we go back to a full day? Our performing arts teachers, uh, I spoke with some of them last week. They are looking at their schedules, thinking about what if any changes need to be made given the slight change in our schedule. And we'll share a list with us so we know when students are free. And that's, that work will be happening over the next couple of days. Great, here's a question about lunch. Can you please provide detail on how kids can buy lunch? So we will use our uh, system that we've had, um, the pay for it system. We won't use cash at lunch. That system, you can preload money into your child's card in their system. And then when students purchase food, the money will be taken out of the account. The, uh, the, the que the, another question we're receiving is like, what will lunch look like? And right now we're gonna offer a cold lunch option, which will be sandwiches and a salad. If things go really smoothly, we will probably increase the menu options for students, but the more options we have, the, the longer it takes for students to pick up their lunch. And we wanna make sure that it's really efficient. So we're gonna start with a very limited option for students. Here's a question about orientation for grade seven students in particular, since they missed that this fall, will there be any kind of orientation for them? We've had some conversations with um, members of the grade seven team. We haven't put together a complete plan yet, but that's certainly on our radar that a lot of the information that students typically have, they, they haven't been exposed to yet. Here's a question about what happens if students have a free period in between classes, um, for example, a study hall. Ms. Joseph, would you like to take that one? Yeah, I mean, there, there, you, will, you will find students who have a free period, say block B, between a block A and C. It is a 49, 49 minute period. If you're in grade seven through 10, you could be signed out and go home, but we do have designated spaces on campus for you to attend and have supervision. Um, if you're in grade seven and eight, you should have an assigned study hall. So that should that should be on the schedule for grades nine and 10. With this new full day plan, you will also see that on your schedule. Um, but as, as you increase in grades, there is more freedom and, and independence. But for grades seven and eight, assign study halls always. The next question is from the parent of a fully remote student. What will change for those fully remote students besides the few extra minutes in each class? Schedule stays the same. So it's not as though you get different classes or different teachers. So it truly is just those four additional minutes per class. No other changes there. The transition period's a little bit shorter. So if you did work during that time or had lunch, you just have a little less time then. Now here's a couple of questions about next fall. Um, will there be a fully remote and hybrid option? Uh, do we have a plan for families that don't feel comfortable? And will there be any mandatory uh, vaccination requirements? Dr. Newell, would you like to take that? Uh, yes, happy to. Um, so we will continue to follow the New York State Department of Health and also the New York State Education Department. Um, the New York State Education Department decides whether or not our program can be credit bearing. So as of this year, yes, a fully remote program was allowed. We are not yet, we've not yet been notified what next year will look like. But if we are allowed to continue a fully remote option, uh, we will. Um, and in terms of mandatory vaccinations at this point, I have not seen anything regarding mandatory vaccinations 
uh, for 16 and up through 18 year olds, even though that's available right now. Uh, so again, that would be coming from the state of New York, but our plan is to be fully in person in the fall and to follow the options as we can from uh, the State Department. Thank you. The next question is, can students who walk to and from school, can they leave during the transition without being signed out? If we have students in grade seven and eight who wanna uh, go home, we would ask that they be signed out. Now we're gonna do sign out in two different ways. If students leave every single day during the transition, we'll have one list to indicate that so parents don't have to submit a daily sign out request. For students who sign out sometimes, those are the students and families that we'd ask for parents to indicate when their children would leave. And that will be through a Google form. Thank you. Here's another one that I think we've answered, but um, I think it bears repeating. The question is, if a student has a study hall block A, for example, can the student continue to arrive later for period two as he or she has been doing since September? Yes, that's perfectly okay. Yes. Okay, the next question is about food. Can you please be more specific about the type of cold lunch the school is providing? Will it be prepared in the school cafeteria or purchased from an outside vendor? The vendor we work with is Whitson's. And so in a traditional year, they are the ones who prepare all the food. We had a meeting today to talk about food service and what that would look like. We expect Whitson's to use our cafeteria. That's not been set in stone. In terms of options, we do think that we'll have one or two different sandwich options, a salad option. And again, we wanna make sure that whatever we uh, provide to students that they're able to get that food quickly and safely and then have enough time to eat lunch. Once we've really made our process efficient, we will then likely increase the options for students, but we'll start with a very limited option. Here's another question about lunch. First, do all the seventh graders have lunch together? What will the seating arrangement indoors be like? Will there be additional space outdoors? And in case of inclement weather, can a student opt to go home just for that day? Would you like to take that, Ms. Johnson? I would love to. So yes, all of the seventh graders do have lunch together. And that's why it's so important for you to fill out the Google form, because we're looking to your information to see how many students we can expect to stay on campus for lunch. Um, it is very likely, hopefully, that all the seventh graders will be in the same space, for example, the San Marco gym. Um, but again, it depends on the answer to your, to your Google form fill out. Um, if they are in the gym, for example, we have desks set up that are more than six feet apart. Students will be assigned to a desk where they can eat, you know, they can remove their mask and eat, uh, supervised for a shorter period of time. Then they will be instructed to put their mask back on. And then after that, they are welcome to socialize a bit more, talk to their friends. So our number one goal is to keep everybody safe. So for the eating portion of lunch, um, it will be a bit more restrictive, but then after once masks are back on, they can definitely socialize. When the weather's nice, absolutely, because they can really spread out and enjoy the beautiful weather, either on the center of campus, the grass, the patio, um, around the, the gym area, definitely will make those spaces available. And the, the final part of that is in case of inclement weather, yes, your child can opt to go home. Um, as long as you can come pick them up or you know, sign them out, absolutely, they are welcome to go home on a particular day uh, for whatever reason. Um, the next question is, can you please tell me more about the program the Nature Center will be providing? Ms. Joseph, would you like to speak to that a little more? Yeah. Uh, the Greenberg Nature Center really does work with things like ecology, biodiversity, sustainability, but I think they have, a, they have a set curriculum, but we're trying to see how we can align their curriculum with the EHS science curriculum. So that's still being worked out as we speak, but it's mostly ecology and ecology centered. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Here's another one about Greenberg and the arts experience. Will kids be randomly placed or can they choose with whom they study? We uh, will probably treat it like a class, even though it's not credit bearing and we don't let students decide who they're gonna be in class with. 
the, um, for the nature center, students by the end of the school year, they will have about 15 hours of workshops. And for grade seven, uh, seventh graders will have about 15 hours of workshops with the DAE. Thank you. There's a couple more about band and chorus. I think maybe just to clarify again, Mr. Hosier, that um, you know the, the fine and performing arts teachers are working on the schedule, um, taking those lessons out of lunch. So students will have a lunch. Yeah, every student will have a lunch. So the schedule may be adjusted a little bit. It could also offer an opportunity for our teachers to see students at a time that is a little uh, better for everyone involved. Everyone will have a lunch and seventh and eighth graders will always be supervised. So if they have a free then, it would turn into a study hall, but rest assured that students will be supervised during that time. The next question is, um, some students could walk home on the days when their free period is adjacent to the transition. Do parents have to come to school to sign them out in order for them to go home for lunch? No, we'll use the Google form. We, we don't want parents to have to call or email every single day. We know that that would become just too much to manage. So again, using the same email that I send each morning about the easy screen reminder, we'll use a Google form there so that if on day two, you want your child to be able to leave, we'd ask you to complete that Google form and we'd have record that they were, they were given permission to leave. Thank you. The next question is, is about um, the days when students have Greenberg Nature Center. Are they allowed to come for half the day? For example, this parent writes that her son has one class, then a study hall, then lunch, then the transition. Could he stay home that day in the morning and then come in the afternoon for his academic classes? We, we encourage students to participate in the workshops with the Nature Center, with the DAE. We really think that students will get a lot out of that. So knowing that, we'd encourage everyone to come in if they're supposed to be full day. We know that there are exceptions to the rules. So if you, if you feel like that doesn't work best for your child, please reach out to us so that we make sure that we have a, a clear understanding of what your plan is. Here's, here's a question I think is important to clarify. The parent writes, can students who stay on campus for lunch and transition play sports or play on the field or do something instead of Greenberg Nature Center or digital arts? Great clarifying question. And um, the answer is no, that if we have seventh graders who are on campus, we have an assigned lunch period and we have the Nature Center or the DAE. And the reason why we're not gonna allow a ton of flexibility beyond that is that when we have students sort of picking their own activity, supervision becomes a huge concern. If you remember from our earlier conversations, that was one of the reasons why we were so worried about the transition period. And these partnerships allow us to make sure that students are supervised and engaged in meaningful uh, learning. So no, we wouldn't allow that type of freedom on campus. And here's a related question. Can a student stay on campus for lunch but then get signed out for the transition um, or are they required to go to major center or digital arts if they are having lunch on campus? If a student is on campus, when we offer the nature center or the digital arts, students would, would have to go and participate in those workshops. If a student left um, after lunch and they weren't on campus, that would be permitted. But again, I think, I think they're really great opportunities for students. And so we'd encourage students to participate in those workshops. If I could just jump in, I just want to make sure everyone's clear that they are not, not graded. They're not credit bearing. They're not graded. They're exploratory. And, and I think if you look at the importance of middle level education and what we've learned about middle level education and the needs of students, especially during this pandemic, uh, that, that was the reason for the design. Dr. Newell, I, I have one here that may be for you. Do you have an update on how many faculty and staff have been vaccinated? So I can tell you that vaccinations have been offered to every adult um, faculty and staff member who, have a want, who wanted a vaccination. I can also tell you that more than 50% of every staff member has been vaccinated, but beyond that, I don't have the breakdown or the specifics. Thank you. The next question is another one about Greenberg Nature Center. Um, you mentioned, Mr. Hosier, the possibility of going to the Nature Center. How would students get there? 
So uh, we will have five or six facilitators from the Greenberg Nature Center who come here, who meet students. Uh, we will have a classroom for students, you know, 20, no more than 20, so that if the weather is problematic, there's a place to learn on campus. When the weather's nice like it was today, we think it's a really great opportunity to explore the Nature Center with those facilitators. And actually, uh, Dr. Newell and myself walked that um, just to see how long it would take, and it's all of about four minutes. So students would walk there uh, in those small groups with the facilitator and then come back at the end of the workshop. If I could just add, for, for those who don't know, there's actually a cleared path through the woods. So it's cleared, it is uh, chips, has wood chips, it's clear, clearly marked, so they won't be going out to Central Avenue, the, the, there's a clear, clear path right from campus. My and day would be better if every day I got to take that walk. So again, we think it's a great opportunity. And just to add that students would be escorted, they would not be sent on their own through the wood, wood path. They would always be escorted to and from the Nature Center uh, if we were to go there. Now there's several questions about lunch. Um, are students allowed to bring their own lunch or do they have to buy it from the school? Students can bring their own lunch, yes. And here's a question asking for instructions. And yes, we will absolutely send instructions for enrolling in the pay for it system once we are sure that that's what we will use. Um, the next question is where will students eat lunch if they stay all day? We, we have a number of locations identified. And again, we wanna use outdoor space as much as possible, but we also have the San Marco gym that's not being used. So, so a number of students can fit in there. We have the cafeteria, we have the back of the cafeteria. If it's during the transition period, no classes are happening. So there's a lot of uh, options at that point. And again, that's why it's so important for so many families to complete the uh, Google form that's going to go out. So we have an accurate number and that's going to be allow us to make the more detailed plan that we need. Can students eat lunch with their friends or will they be assigned tables for eating and not be able to choose to eat with friends? We will likely use a uh, system that other schools have used. I think it's a good idea where students when they are at a table or at a desk and again separate for um, six feet away from their peers use a, a QR code for attendance so students can take a picture of that, submit where they sat, and that'll just help in terms of contact tracing as well. And we would, based on that, we would allow students to have flexibility with where they sit. The next question is, um, is it a problem for the Nature Center Digital Arts Program if a student goes home for lunch during one day of the schedule that, that has Nature Center but stays in school for another day? In other words, are they independent sessions? In our conversations, I think uh, both community organizations know that flexibility is important. So again, we'd love for families to engage in all of the workshops. If that's not possible, we'd, we'd rather have students engage in half of them than none at all. So yes, that would be permissible. Now here's a question about grades and um, things associated with fully remote students. This parent writes that they have a situation at home um, where they really need for medical reasons their student to remain fully remote. And they're wondering, will that negatively impact the grades for that student? Will teachers consider the fact that in some cases staying fully remote is necessary? Will they take that into account or will it harm the student? I think our, our teachers understand that there are reasons why students and families would want to stay remote. And so just like we've approached grades throughout the year, I don't see anything changing with this. Um, yes, people are starting to get vaccinated, but we also know that there are, are real reasons why people aren't able to be on campus. And I can't imagine that anyone would use that against someone who has to stay remote. That was our last question. I hope I tried to combine ones that were similar. So I hope parents that I didn't um, Skip yours if you can still write on the Google Doc if you had an additional question that you believe was not answered, but that was our final question. All right, and I'll just put in a, a plug then. Uh, we have another parent meeting at 8 p.m. Much of what it will be talked about will be the same, but tailored more specifically to students in grades nine through 12. And, and uh, this, you know, this is our third meeting like this where we've tried to develop a plan and collect feedback 
And I feel like all of the feedback we received has really helped us uh, be where we are now. I, I can't say that the plan's perfect, but I think it's as close as we can um, get to during a pandemic. So thank you to everyone who took the time to provide the feedback, uh, who took the time to speak with us. And please look for the email that's gonna go out later tonight with the Google form and encourage your friends to uh, submit the uh, Google form as well so we have accurate numbers. Thank you everyone, be well. Thank you. Bye.